All right, let's see. It being the hour of, uh, of uh, seven o'clock, I will call the meeting to order. Um, I'll bring up the agenda first. Uh, does this working for everybody? You can see the shared screen and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, uh, are there any announcements? Okay, uh, hearing none, we will go on to the next. Uh, the first part of business is approve our minutes. We actually have minutes from two meetings. Um, I think I have, here's the minutes from our uh, August 24th uh, meeting. Um, I don't know if everybody, I did not include them in that data packet that I sent out and I apologize. Um, I don't know if anybody's had a chance to look at them. Um, I did, this is Mary Kate. I'd move to approve the minutes of, what's the date on that? August 24th. Uh, August 24th, 2020. I second it. Um, thank you. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Excellent. Okay. So, uh, and our next minutes that we need to look at are from our special select board meeting on uh, August the 31st. Um, once again, I, I did not include that in this, the, the data packet I sent out. Um, um, most of what we did there was we set the 2020 municipal tax rate and we suspended the 8% uh, uh, late uh, property tax penalty. Um, I don't know, have, uh, yeah. have yep. Ms. Mary-Kate, I will move to uh, approve the August 31st, 2020 minutes. This is John, I'll second. Um, excellent, is there any discussion? Uh, hold on a second. Nice. Um, all those in favor of approving the August uh, 31st, uh, 2020 uh, minutes, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed and abstentions. All right. I'll just kind of leave that down there. Um, our next order of business is to check warrants. Let's see if I can bring up the warrant in question. This is the payroll warrant, I think, is the only one I saw, right? Yeah, just a payroll warrant. Yeah. And I'll bring it up. Here we go. Uh, there's one payroll warrant. Um, uh, payroll warrant 00914 uh, for $8,443.05. What's your pleasure, as Ken Wheeling used to say? Move to approve. This is John. Thank you, John. Second, Bill. Great. Is there any discussion? All those in favor of approving uh, payroll warrant uh, 00914 uh, for the amount of uh, $8,443.05, so please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed and abstentions. Excellent. Let's see, uh, public comment. Is there any public comment for this evening? All right, uh, let's see. Um, our first order of new business is the Boy Scout request to use Town Green for popcorn sales. George, mm -hmm. I imagine that you're here to, to speak to that. Actually, uh, Karen is. Karen, Karen is I apologize, my can bad. I, can, I, can I make, can I make? Oh, okay, go ahead. Well, I wanted to start by correcting it. It's not Boy Scouts anymore. They're now called Scouts BSA. My uh, bad again. <laughs> that's all right. It's new information to you, maybe. There's three units in town, three scouting units through BSA. The Cubs are the younger guys, the younger guys and gals. They're now co-ed. 
and then there's a boys troop for the high school middle school age kids and a girls troop for the females of the same age all right yeah no biggie thank you <laughs> yeah <clears throat> but we did want to ask about using the town green area there right by the town sign where you drive through one way to set up a popcorn sales booth um every year the boys get the scouts bsa sell popcorn and this year with everything going on they're encouraging us they're actually not allowing us to go door to door to sell the popcorn um they want us to do pop-up popcorn booths like a like a sales booth um in your local community at a place of business but because we don't have any places of business um we brainstormed having it there and we just want to get the proper permission to do that. Uh, that sounds great. What what dates were you thinking about? Oh, dates. Um, there's four weekends. Um, so it would be Saturday and Sunday, um, starting September 26th, and then every weekend running until October 18th. So it would be four weeks in a row. So there's, um, so you're asking people to sort of drive past where the library is, right? And the library is open on Saturdays. I'm not sure what the hours are, do you know? I don't know. I do know that they're open for porch pickup. Jane, what are the hours uh, on Saturday on um, the library? I think it's nine to 12. Nine to 12 on Saturday for the library hours. Thursday okay. evening right now. So we would like to, I, I would suggest that Patrons of the library should have unlimited access with unfettered access to the library as it is a service to the community. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so if you can manage to try and create a situation where that can happen, that would be great. Yeah, yeah. And we've done it in the past um, with Girl Scouts having a cookie booth in the same location. Um, and it worked out pretty well. We put up an awning and had a little table um, and then had some people kind of directing traffic through if it did get busy or clogged, but it didn't really get busy or clogged in my memory. Um, but yeah, we would definitely, um, you know, make accommodations for that. Would it be, would it be possible to maybe do it in the town hall? parking area there and have cars pull over into there? I don't think there's enough width there to that parking area for that. Yeah. To pull in. Might the, be a little dangerous. Might be a little right. dangerous with the so, traffic. I, I, I agree. That's why that's why it seemed perfect going over there. But we can I'm sure we can accommodate the um, most usual not super heavy traffic. Yeah, no, yeah, why, I, not, I would why, think not, why not? Worst, worst case, you just move a little south of the road and stay away from the parking spaces right in front of the library. Right. Right. And before when we did it, I think um, I did with Deb was a librarian at the time. I think she's still there, but it might be Melanie that I would talk to this time. I don't know, but I'll, I'll reach out to them. Okay, that'd be great. I mean, you could even just sort of on Saturdays, not start until one o'clock or something, but I, what, whatever is going to work for you. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I just want to hear from the board. Are, uh, is there anybody who's not comfortable with them doing that? Okay. I'm fine with it. This is John. I mean, the, the Girl Scouts have done similar in the past without issue, as long as they're coordinating with the library people and they're happy. I'm happy. Okay. So that's great. We have no problem. And it sounds like a great way and I'll be happy to stop by and pick up a double batch of popcorn. Nice. <laughs> we need a vote on this, Steve, or is it? I, I, um, I, if you wanna make a motion and, and vote it through, that'd be fine. Um, I have no objection. Probably makes sense. Um, we kind of did that when we close the road down for the, uh, I know we're not closing it down, but just to be consistent in terms of use. So I'll, I'll move, um, Karen, can you, can you, um, I didn't write down the dates, but can you, um, those dates? 
September 26th through October 18th, just the weekends. Okay. Uh, I'll move to um, uh, approve the use of the uh, space out in front of the library for the and now it's not the Girl Scouts of America or the Boy Scouts, it's the American? The Scouts. The Scouts yeah, VSA. the Scouts. Uh, Scouts VSA. Yeah. Okay. Um, for weekends, uh, September 26th through, September, to, through October 18th for sale of with, popcorn. With, and can we add with provision to access to the library during opening hours at all times. Sure. Back okay. in. All right. Um, all those in favor, uh, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. And abstentions. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. You bet. Karen, thank you very much. Yeah. That's great. Great way to get it done. Yeah. Okay, next order of business. Um, the, um, let's see. Uh, ECI met with uh, the. Ben. Yeah, the road foreman. I just wanted, I was kind of trying to get, get everything over here so I could. Uh, yeah, thanks. Yeah. Um, uh, met with ECI, who's doing the work for Vermont Gas uh, to solve the uh, issue with the uh, frost heat on uh, Rotex Road. And um, my understanding from Ben is that he felt like what they're proposing is um, uh, way overkill. Um, what they are going to do is to... Um, uh, he, ECI felt that the problem was caused by, um, you're getting this second hand. I can get, uh, you can reach out to Ben if you want more information. But um, when they put that, um, when they put the pipe in uh, across Rotex Road, um, after they bedded it, they covered it with um, a material they call Easy Flow. It's basically kind of, um, sort of a concrete and that um, the feeling was that ice had gotten, water had gotten in underneath that and pushed it up causing the frost heat. So um, the plan as I understand it is to, um, is to um, dig up the area, um, uh, the entire area, um, and then um, bed it, put bedding material over the pipe. So they're going all the way down to the pipe level and uh, gravel and put in perforated pipe. Uh, perforated pipe um, on, um, uh, at uh, 100 foot intervals, I believe. And, and then, uh, so they take that, perf the, what the water that's generated from that perforated pipe and they run it down um, until uh, it exits uh, to daylight with solid pipe. Um, at, on top of the perforated pipe is gravel, um, um, uh, insulation material, and then uh, more material to build up uh, to the actual road surface. And the other, I hope I'm not missing anybody who wants to come into the meeting or not. Um, this is the, uh, this is the uh, right of way permit that we um, got from the Engineers Construction Inc. Um, uh, work to be performed in uh, effect uh, to eliminate heaving caused by uh, BGS crossing. Um, install aggregates, fabric, sub base, and drainage as per. Um, as per plans provided and reviewed on site. 
Um, so that was reviewed uh, with Ben. Ben uh, Howardell, uh view on it was that it was <laughs> amazingly overkill um, for, for what is, um, he felt the problem was. Um, so that's the information that I have at the moment. Um, and I would take questions at this time. Ben did mention that they're going to leave one lane open at all times. Thank you. Oh, it would have been good if they put, would have been good if they put that on the, on the, uh, the permit. We can, we can, uh, we can, we're, as you'll see, um, we can, we can, uh, put things on the permit um, ourselves. Okay, you know, that, we, I'm gonna do that. That is one way. I, I just wanna, I wanna do that in case a call comes in. Um, you, just, could, I, you, you could see that one way traffic will be, for, be provided at minimum as one of those yeah. check marks. Yeah. So anyway, this is Nate Palmer here. Can I have a minute? Yes, Nate. So um, we just spent like three days last week, was it, yeah. with the whole uh, hearings on the whole uh, violation issues. And yep. it's just so many of the things that are violations are exactly probably what's causing this problem where they didn't compact it, where they didn't uh, vet it properly. And it's like uh, one of the really big issues is they didn't have the proper oversight and engineering be nice to know if this has got an engineer record on it and if it's actually following the way they're supposed to be doing things. It's really kind of scary to hear that they've got to go down to the pipe and correct the problem down there if the pipe itself is heaving that much. You know, because you look at the, the situation where they have major incidences, 85% of the major incidences are either at 90 degree turns, road crossings, or stream crossings. And we've got all three of those you know, probably a 2,000 foot section right there. And it's a pretty big deal if that's moving around. <laughs> it would really be nice to know that they really do have proper engineering looking at this issue. Because, you know, it's like they've done, you know, everybody just kind of assumes that they do the right thing. And from what the hearings show and what the hearing, where the hearing officer is reacting is that these guys are way out of control. And I think somebody somewhere along the line needs to be asking some questions as to, you know, whether this is a seat of the pants repair or if they've actually got an engineer on board this time. Um, so, so but, uh, Nate, let me just, let me clarify. So you're, you th think that the town should ask for, um, Plants certified by an engineer. How does that? What's your question? Yeah, somebody order? other than Chris LaForce, their intern. Do, do we know if ECI has an engineer of record that did this study? Um, that's the question. I mean, it, it's a specific question that needs to be. Uh, usually, they'll. An engineer of record will sign documents uh -huh. um, and say, you know, this is the design, this is the way I want it to be done, and then it should be followed through. Okay, so that didn't happen so many places. So um, it never happen again. That's fine. Uh, as I as I understand it, um, uh, you would like us to make these this right of way um, certificate um, uh, conditional on the plan being certified by an engineer of record. Have I got that correct? Yes. yes. Somebody okay. needs to put their name on it. So yeah, I got it. Responsible. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the other thing is, um, we'd like to know how deep it is there because we got two um, different depths from different entities with VGS. So it would be nice to know, I mean, it, obviously they will know how deep it is. Sure. And that should be on the record as well. Just to clear up whether it's seven foot or 11 foot or what it is.
uh, so uh, depth of pipe, uh, depth to top of pipe is really what you want. Yeah, depth of cover is what they refer to it as. Hey, Nate and Jan, Jane, um, the depth of the pipe, I, I'm, cu I'm curious. I just want to know what your perspective is on what, what your concern is with the depth of pipe. I, I, well, it's in, I just want to know. It's in their permit. You know, they're supposed to do their, their road crossings at at least seven foot. Right. No, I understand. Um, and if it's and that's, that's a good, that's a, no, that's a good point. That's a good point. I just, no, I was just asking. Yeah. yeah. And, and the, the, the records, their spotty records that they have say it's at one depth. I can't remember how deep it is. And then um, when they had, when the PUC had the investigator from uh, t Texas come up, he said it was a different depth. He read it at a different depth. So there's, and the same thing goes with the stream crossing that's um, east. So um, it's, it's like, you know, these are all the things that we should have all been, somebody should have watched this happen and document it. They were supposed to take pictures. They were supposed to, you know, document all this stuff and they didn't. They Daily. just didn't. Um, and they didn't do a lot of the things that they said they were going to do when they applied for a permit. So, you know, it's pretty disturbing. A lot of it has to do with compaction, bedding material. Um, but, you know, so this is a place where they're gonna be opening it up. We feel it's, it's pretty important that one, that there's someone who's gonna put their name on it and two, that we know how deep it is. Okay, so and that's great. Well, I think, I think those are all, um, we will, um, uh, we will, we can put those uh, special restrictions and conditions um, on that. Um, I have th three of them. One lane of traffic allowed at all times, plan certified by an engineer of record, and um, uh, depth of, of cover um, over the pipe to be noted. Another thing that would be really nice is photographs. They were supposed to do that everywhere, but they didn't. So, I mean, it's a cell phone photograph. It's pretty simple to do. And, and when you have a picture, you know, you can see what's been done. And one thing that's going to definitely affect the town is if you're running drainage down both sides of that ditch, when it comes to the road that our house is on, uh, the culvert there hasn't worked since I've ever been there. So they're <laughs> very, very little, so there's going to be a lot more uh, water flowing on that culvert. So you probably yeah. want to consider that. Okay. It's like there's actually two culverts there: one that takes the brook, and the other one that takes the ditch water. And the ditch water one's always been basically plugged. So if they're going to start relying on that for water flow, they're going to have to do something with that culvert, or they will. So, I mean, I see here that, that there's a ditch and that's a ditch water. It doesn't, yeah. it's, it, we're way, we're way, um, way up from our house, but. way up from your house. And because it's perforated pipe, uh, a lot of that perforated pipe will now bring water across this way and, and out that way. So in fact, it would sort of drain in, into that swamp. Um, uh, you know, or drain on that side of the road. Where's the barn? Yeah, I don't know. It's got his farm road there. Is this the barn? The shed? No, that's no. The barn. The barn is at the bottom right of the picture that you can't bottom see. Right? Okay. Sorry. Oh, okay. So our driveway is way left, bottom left. You're further down on the left. Yeah. 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 yeah you're way up here somewhere. Beverly yeah. up here. And Raymond here. Okay. Um, okay. So, um, I guess I would entertain a motion to approve this uh, right of way permit uh, subject to the conditions um, 
that uh, the depth of cover over the pipe be recorded, um, one lane of traffic allowed at all times, and uh, plans uh, be certified by an engineer of record. And photographs taken if possible. Okay. Well, actually part of their permit, they were supposed to take photographs yeah. of the daily records and they right. didn't. So it's yeah. time for them to start doing what they're supposed to be doing right along. It's not a big ask. Just do what they're supposed well, to do. Well, then they'll no, know if something no. goes wrong, they'll know what's wrong. No, I know, but a photograph won't show you depth. Unless they have a stick. You know, but like right now, they would already know what's in there if they'd been taking photographs daily. They were doing it. And documented, you know, when they did it, how big, how okay. big how the depth of cover was. All right. Okay. Photographs of work site taken daily. That's, that's what I got. Yep. Thank you very much. So I move that we approve the right of way application with those four conditions that the roads stay open, that photographs are taken daily, that the depth to cover is there, and an engineer from ECI says that they've reviewed and approved this application. I second that. Uh, is there any more discussion? I guess All those my only, I'm sorry, my only, if they say an engineer, from ECI, that term engineer is used kind of loosely, we found out, we didn't really realize that. Um, an engineer of record is someone who actually puts their yeah. name on the plan. I got it, so, I, mean, I got it. Say, yeah, okay, but- That's, that's how, we're, that's how yeah. it's worded. Um, we're asking for an engineer of record to sign okay. the, to sign the plan, so. Yeah, the, the motion did not say engineer of record, so we should oh, probably add I apologize. that. apologize. I'll go back and, and change my motion that it includes the words engineer of record. Thank you. Thank Second you. that. Excellent. Any more discussion? All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed and abstentions. John and Jane, thank you very much. Thank you much. Thank you. Um, let's see. Okie dokie, let's see, what do I got next? On the Grand Hit Parade. Um, I have, um, I put next up, actually let's do real business and we can come back to the budget status uh, report after that. Um, uh, the hotel and curb cut, Rotex Road, um, I don't remember which members of the select board said they were going to go take a look at it or which member. I went, I went, this is Paul Lowe. I went yeah. to look at it with Ben and it was approved. Ben had, had already spoken to <clears throat> uh, Terry. To, to, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm trying to find the application That's right. here. Oh dear. It's up on the screen. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. I'll just go to that because, yeah, yeah Terry Terry failed to give us his uh, his actual uh, residence. Uh, that's thirty one Cardinal Lane. I was sit trying to find that. He's out of state, so I I have. We're going to clarify the address for the application. Ben sent him the specifications that he will need a culvert pipe, and Ben has already contacted him and gave him the specs. He's in agreement with it. Um, the only thing that we have to, I have to advise, revise is that he gave us a, a, a particular position on that, on that, uh, culvert and, or the, excuse me, that act, that curb cut and his drawings are not representative of the, exactly where he really wants it. I made a, I made a, uh, I had to actually pull up a Moncton town map and clear that up because he's got, yes, correct. You've got a narrow showing there. It's actually further east of that on the property line. If you see a line right there, yeah, yep, that's right the there, line. exactly. He's right there between that point and a telephone pole. That's where he's got it. Um, there was a little confusion there, but we're good there. The other thing too is um, there was a second curb cut that Ben mentioned to me that he had already investigated, but 
I had not, I did not get a chance to get down to town hall to find out what that was. However, we guess we'll just address this one at the time because I did not know why uh, none of us were advised. I asked Ben, I said, you have to advise us when you get a contact for a curb cut and approve it based on the conditions. So uh, he had already submitted it and put it in the town hall. So uh, yes, we are good to go. I, I don't have, uh, I have to, I guess I have to uh, confer with, with Bill Martin on how to do the electronic signing on these things because I'm not uh, capable of doing it at this time. Already loaded for me to send it to the select board and to Ben if it gets approved. Um, okay, okay thank, so, thank but, you, Bill. But um, just so I'm clear, you, uh, Paul, you made some uh, changes to this to this form, or or no, 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 I, no. The only the only thing that I have to to address is is that he did never he never filled out his complete address on that form. If you can look at it, yeah. Um, he has no, he has no complete address on this form. And I think that was necessary. Okay. So that's the only, that's the only change. Um, other than the fact that what he drew in his picture on the map is not consistent with what he had told Ben and what, and we, we, we found a path that he was using to access the field which was consistent with what he had told Ben, but the gentleman did not correctly identify that or did not clearly identify that in this, this application. So, so I, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm circling back. Um, I, so, so well, it does, need I guess it does need a culvert. Ben has already completed this application. Ah, okay. He had taped, he has completed the entire application and he has already submitted it to the owner uh, as to what is required for the culvert size and the placement. Okay. So, uh, uh, again, so Ben has a completed form? Correct. Okay. So we need the, that. The, yeah. Yeah, I know. He, he, uh, that's I'm okay. not from the, I'm not familiar with this, but Ben had already, but Ben had already told me that he had a second one that he completed. So I guess um, one of the things that I, I'm kind of interested in knowing is that most often, most of these permits or these, you know, applications have to be approved by him. And for the rest of us, we are really going by his judgment. Uh, why can't we just, you know, make this a simpler process and have him submit us the full application for us to approve rather than for a select board member to have to go through this process of chasing down all these this information on this application. I, I was not aware select board members need to chase it down. Yeah. The, the application should be submitted complete to us. If it's not complete, we don't, we don't vote on it until it's complete. So if Ben's got a complete one, if the only change is adding the size and length of the culvert, we could sub, we could approve it subject to that. But usually it's just a visit with him to see, and then we'll approve it just after we assure that it's consistent with our past practices. Yeah. So the select board's really responsible for the, um, uh, the, the driveway ordinance and how um, how people enter the, the traveled lane. I mean, sort of that's, and right. statute that's kind of really, if you know, in your select board handbook, um, uh, that's how it's, that's how it's written up, that we're responsible yeah. for that. Oh, no, uh, no, I mean, no, I'm not, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not questioning that. I just, there might be a way to streamline that with, you know, when Ben told me that he had already approved another one or had I should say, went through the application and signed off on all the culvert needed. It could have just been easily sent to us rather than him telling me while we yeah. were looking at, at this one so that now we have a second one sitting in the town hall that isn't even, you know, isn't available for us to vote on even tonight or in the- No, no, I mean, 
generally our process is we we ask a member of the select board to go to go look at it uh, to make sure that it you know that, that the select board's happy with it as well I um, right no no I understand I just uh, but Ben doesn't understand it okay uh, sounds like a conversation to be had with Ben then. yep Uh, so what's your have, pleasure with this one? John? Well, I have one question on this. Um, you mentioned on that map that the, the curb cut was actually going to be right near that black line. Is that the property line? That is. Uh, other curb cuts now, we've, yeah, yeah. we've approved, we have asked them to stay 50 feet back. We just did one on Hard Scrabble Road a while back. So if, if he's right on the property line, I, I don't know that that's a requirement. I know some people share an access road, so it straddles the property line. But if you're not doing that, we have asked others to stay 50 feet away. Right. That, that's exactly where, first of all, on this map, I can't tell exactly what he identified other than these two black blobs that are located just where the where Steve was just had your cursor there um, and and all I can tell you is that with Ben had talked to the owner and described that it was going to be as you said John it's going to be it's not it's going to be within 50 feet of the property line it's going to be like like five feet from the property line so um, he did not bring up any concerns to me. So again, I'm, I'm still learning the, the, you know, the issues here. So if there is a, if we do have a restriction on that, then we need to resolve that before we approve it. Yeah, I, I don't know where that came from, but that's the first time it came up was when we did that hard scrabble one, at least the first time in my memory that it came up. And, but somebody's description was, well, we normally ask people to stay 50 feet back so if he's not I'm assuming that that might need I don't know if you need the permission of the abutting landowner or something or if they need to request a variance or I, I don't know I don't know where the 50 feet came from so I, I yeah I I, I I do know we've required it of others really I I mean it's the guy right on the corner where hard scrabble turns from east west to turn north south yeah right near the piney woods road intersection that guy was moving his curb cut and we told him just as long as you're not moving it within 50 feet of the property line that's fine if he was going to do that there were more hoops to jump through okay um you know just just for your information the the, the new town offices uh you know parking lot is within 25 feet of the the property line. And in fact, everybody said, why did you leave 25 feet there? Why don't you just push it right on over? But anyway. Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't know what our practice was. That hard scrabble one was the first one I heard somebody ask. And I may be remembering wrong, Steve, but I thought it was you who asked them, are you 50 feet? Um, I, I, but, so I, I don't think the uh, church cares where our driveway was, but, uh, and I don't know where that practice came from or why it came up in that one, but it did. Okay. Um, All right. Let's, um, I, I, let's not act on this um, at this meeting. Let's get the, the, the form as it's been completed by Ben. Um, and, uh, uh, we can pull up the UPD, and if anybody can find something that says the driveways have to be 50 feet away from boundary lines, then that's the rule that we'll go by. If we can't find such a thing, then we won't. We won't. Yeah. Do it. I, I'm I'm not raising an objection. I just want to raise it because it had come up before. So. Okay. Nope. No, I, that's good you know, point. Yep, and I'm uncomfortable passing on on a form that's not that's not has hasn't been presented to us complete and showing the actual location um, so um, 
let's take that up at our next at our next uh, meeting. Yeah, and I'll I'll work on that to resolve the uh, curb cut location, and I'll express I'll try and I'll get the homework done to figure out and, and advise the owner to. Uh, uh, we'll we'll have to mark it for the owner and tell them that's where it's got to be based on any rules that I find. Okay, that's a deal. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Appointments. We have one a very simple appointment, so let's do that one. Uh, there we go. Uh, we have uh, uh, been sort of remiss. I think um, the, the Conservation Commission has been after us for a while to make this appointment. This is uh, Carolyn Alves. Uh, Alves, does anybody know this person? Anyway, um, obviously um, a very, uh, um, a great person to be working on this. You know, well-educated, does a whole bunch of GIS work. Um, So, uh, as I understand it, the um, Chelsea uh, Smiley has been asking us to make this appointment. Let me just. Um, yes, to appoint uh, uh, Carolyn to the. Um, uh, just want to follow up whether an appointment has been made. Uh, yep. So, uh, Steve, John. Can you scroll up, Steve? Yes. I can scroll up. Can you how, scroll how up so I can see her name? Yes, I can do that. How's that? I just need to see her name. Nope, there you go. Um, my understanding is that she's been working along with the uh, Conservation Commission uh, for quite some time. And uh, the, the chair of the board of the commission would like us uh, to officially appoint her. John, I hate to ask, do you know what we have for opening? We have, we have two openings. One that expires March of 21, one that expires March of 24. I'd suggest we, re, we appoint her to the one March of 24, um, mm -hmm. r rather than giving her a six month appointment. That sounds great. Uh, so I guess I, that, yeah. I'll make that motion if we're ready to do that. <clears throat> I'll, I, second I just have, I'll yeah. move to appoint Carolyn Alves to the uh, Fill the balance of the Conservation Commission term expiring March 2024. I'll second that, Mary Kate, Go or. Go ahead. Paul. Oh. Excuse me. Did you have, uh, did you. Uh... Yeah, no, I, 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 I had a very simple question. I, I on appointments, <clears throat> I know that. Do we have, do they have to be residents of Moncton to be appointed in these positions? Um, some some positions yes, some positions right. no. Right, and this is where I is this this is okay with the uh, conservation commission does because that's, they have some. That's why Laura Farrell is now an advisor rather than a member. That is she no longer true. Lives in Moncton. So the question there is: are There are a couple houses in Gil on Gilman Row that are in Moncton. That most likely have Heinsberg addresses. Uh, FYI. Yeah, no, I was going to bring up the. Uh, uh, Google it. The grand list. <laughs> that's the way I yeah, live. Yeah, that's the best way to do it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, if I can get this. And we'll just do a search. A L V E S. Yeah. A L V S. There she is. She's on our grant list. She's a Moncton resident. We're all set. Great. Thank you very much for the question. 
go away. All righty. Um, so there's a motion and a second to, to appoint uh, Carolyn Alves uh, to the Conservation Commission. Um, all those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed? And absent, uh, abstentions. All right, that passes unanimously. Um, while we're on appointments, um, we have two appointments that we really need to do. Um, uh, one is that we haven't we haven't applied we haven't advertised. So um, the uh, communications that the Addison County uh, Communications Union District, the AC. CUD um, uh, organizational meeting was held uh, last week. Um, currently, I'm, I'm a representative. Uh, John and Mark Boltz Robinson uh, both have sort of signed up as alternates. Uh, none of us have gone through uh, being, you know, our normal uh, process of of advertising the position and um, you know appointment through the select board. So what I'd like <clears> to <throat> do is advertise that position. I, um, I I'm happy that John and and Mark uh, both have stepped up to the plate with that. I'm happy to step step back from that. Um, there may well be other people in town who are uh, interested in that project and and can devote a bunch of time to it. Because I, I think it's going to take a lot of time. Uh, John, what was your opinion? Yeah, it does seem like it could get rather involved. Yeah. No. You know, you're basically sitting on the board of a, of a, um, a new nonprofit entity. It's got nothing yeah. to do with town business at all. So. Um, so that that was one, and so I was going to advertise that, you know, at least through front porch form, <coughs> and uh, and on the, uh, uh, the Facebook so, page. Steve, um, did we ever did we ever appoint you? No. Okay. No. So we may want to do an interim appointment pending the outcome of that, in case they have something coming up, and you somebody needs to do a provide an official word from Moncton? Yeah, I mean, what happened was, you know, we sort of didn't fill that in and and, and Adam said, I really need a name there. And so, yeah. I, I mean, uh, uh, sure, if you guys wanted to appoint me on an interim basis, I'd be happy to do that. So I, I would move to appoint Steve Pilcher as our interim representative to the Addison County Communications Union District uh, pending the outcome of advertising the permanent position. There you go. Second it. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, is there any discussion? All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 And opposed. And abstentions. And then uh, finally, uh, yeah, sorry. That, that one needs to be added to our town officials list or? No, because. Okay. It, oh, that's right. It's be, not a town. It's not a town thingy. Yeah. Okay. Um, you probably should track it though. Okay. We can do it. I mean, it yeah, doesn't hurt. I think it's probably good. Okay. And then, and then I, I don't know where to go. Uh, with the animal control officer. We've, you know, we appointed whoever he was. I can't re even remember his name. Well, he's never been seen or heard from again. And I actually happened to see Melanie Pizer today on some other business. And she said she still has a box of all the stuff, the notices, the tickets, and the cell phone. And she's going to bring it to my office tomorrow. Good for her. <laughs> this is what I have to say. It's like, you know, you guys need to get shit or get off the pot. So, um, I mean, I think I, we should find that guy or, or I'll find that guy and say, eh, I don't know. 
if you want this job, you're really going to have to work at it. And if not, we'll just advertise and, and try it again. So, Sounds good. Yeah, cool. Okay. Do, 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 do. Budget status report. Do you guys want to look at it? Sure. Uh, yeah. I <laughs> and no, it's an acceptable answer. I'm just telling you. I looked at it. <laughs> you looked at it and it didn't make any damn sense at all. Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, no. I, I, I only look at the, I looked at the holes in the boat. <laughs> That's a great way to do it. So what holes in the boat did you find for us? Uh, I, you, I, I had 20 minutes to look at it. That's unfortunately, I, uh, but I, and I actually tried to print it out and unfortunately that did not print out the way, <laughs> did not print out right. And eventually I will get this Zoom connected with my computer so I can look at both of them at the same time. Right. I apologize, but I, I really did. I just didn't have enough time to look at it in detail. I mean, I, I did, but I cannot, I can't recall we can, some we of the can take this up. We're not, we're not, we're not against it in terms of. Uh, um, I don't think it's something that we can probably, in my opinion, I know personally, I can't tackle something that like uh, to that extent within a five hour window. I have to have at least a couple of days to okay. enjoy That's the great. time to, 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 to enjoy the time to review it really carefully. Yep. I'm not, I'm not a financial analyst. I have to go through things a little more slowly. Yep. So Steve, my suggestion is unless you've got something or anybody saw something that really alarms them or that you thought mer merits a specific item that needs to be brought up that m maybe, uh, we table this till our next meeting. That'd be fine. I mean, there's something I just, uh, yeah. That, that. Uh, no, I mean, when we go, when you go through a town meeting report, everybody has about a month to, to look at those numbers sure. and throw it out at town hall. Sure. I mean, for me, if you can give us a weekend, it's still a challenge in some cases because all of us have got activities going on, but yep. I, I do appreciate looking at it and I do want to do my due diligence, but I still need a little bit more time, I guess. Um, okay. I just, I just need to educate myself. Unlike the rest of the board members who, who probably seen this numerous times. I haven't, I have to sort of, I have to spend a little more time with it. That's a deal. Yeah. So Steve, you know, the main things I'm looking at is kind of where we're over budget and the place I saw the biggest seemed to be related to, the town hall. And yep. so I'm, you know, I, my, I expect that some of it where we ended up paying earlier yep. and it's coming and, but it's part of the bond. Is that yep. kind of how, yeah. That is true. I don't know why he's got it set up the way he's got it set up. That's not, that's not. Yeah. I don't think the bond should what be I should. Step, right. That should not that should not be intermixed. That should sort of be set aside in one little, like, you know, separate well, entity. There is a separate entity. And, and, uh, I know it, there is, there is, I know. I'll, I'll send, I'll, I'll, you know, you're welcome to look through this. I, I'm happy to answer questions. I will tell you that, um, what he has done, not great, but he started that there, there's a, a, a fund number 11. Tax tax account number eleven, and this is at eleven, eleven dash six dash o two is is uh, is is uh, revenues and and then oh I expenses. see yeah. um, but it's still not still not done quite just so and and previous expenses as you point out Mary Kate are not are not taken into account and as far as I know. We've been drawing on that letter of credit, and that's worked well. Um, but we haven't really, if you will, uh, invoiced uh, the bond bank um, for our, you know, to get yeah. to get monies that way. 
which is might be helpful just to have a thing on the building right or has he done that with you know here's here's what we spent here's what yeah is that nope. something no nope. i mean I, I i can provide that i think yeah I, in so fact so something so when we're looking at this if we were in those places where it looks like we're 700 percent over budget um that we can look at another document and say oh that's yeah, yeah. explains it yeah i um I, i'm jumping ahead a little bit but uh, this document has not been sent officially to us yet uh, but i included it and it's a little hard to see i don't know why they colored it but this is we're going to get once a month, oh, okay. um, a requisition from from uh, Naylor and Green, basically, yeah. and 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 it's sort of like, um, okay, this is this is what for this period we're asking for fifty five thousand dollars for site work. Um, so that's the total site work that they've done so far is fifty five. Call it fifty six thousand dollars. The estimate is 143,000. So they've done about 40% of the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's helpful. Yeah, so that'll be useful. Um, yes, I've, I've already told Bill. Hey, Bill, by the way, you're gonna you're gonna get a you're gonna get an invoice from Naylor and Green for something <laughs> on the order of 165,000 dollars, and you better better find a way to pay it. Anyway, all right, where am I? We're not going to do the budget status. That's fine. And we've talked about appointments. I have not yet um, uh, done the work on the uh, road reclassification. I have gotten some. I'm getting a little smarter, and I'm. I and I apologize. I. I feel like I we're playing telephone, and I'm at the end of the telephone. Um, what the issue is is. It's a 30 foot bridge and it either has to be made to the, you know, highway standards or it can be made sort of as a farm bridge, right? A farm bridge being, you know, you, you make two concrete abutments and you put some steel across and, and some wood planks and, and that's a bridge um, as would be appropriate for a driveway. And, uh, that's my understanding of what's required at that spot. Uh, no matter what, we were, there was no 130 foot. I was apparently completely, I, I, we played telephone and I somehow got 130 foot from 30 foot. So um, in any so, case, it's still much cheaper for us to, to move that road to be a town trail. So the 30 foot bridge is town, you can do that as a trail. It doesn't have to be a driveway. That's correct. Okay. It could be a, a town trail. That's correct. As I, again, as I understand it. And Mary Kate, um, how, how long, I have not yet um, done that. How long do I need to, I need to give everybody I think it's 30 a 30 day. day 30 yeah, days. I think it's a 30 day notice. It's a, in the email I sent. Okay. Um, and I think we already have a motion authorizing you to do that yep. the given the proper notice yep. time. So I just need to make the proper notice happen. Steve, FYI on your notice of hearing, the first abutter you have listed no longer owns that house. It's oh, no kidding. Told. If you want me to get the other name for you at the town hall, I will. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. It just saved me from, from, from it dropping off my list and I'll get it to you. All right. Awesome. Yeah, that's good. You knew that, Bill, because we probably would have missed that. That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, I'm down to new town offices and library status. We've um, talked about some of it. Um, those of you who have stopped by the site, um, you can see that they are just finishing up, pouring up um, all four walls. Uh, when they're done with that, they will uh, waterproof 
um, the walls um, and uh, uh, then push the dirt in against the walls and also uh, level out stuff inside, get it all ready, uh, prep it for the, uh, the slab. And the slab should get poured sometime uh, later this week, Thursday or Friday. Uh, my understanding is they're running about five days late on the project, but feel that they will uh, be able to make the contract date. Um, okay. I mean, this is, this is where I'd really like to push because you want to get undercover, right? That's, that's, that's the deal. You want to be, you want to be undercover when winter rolls around. Uh, let's see. And, uh, the other piece is that I have a conversation going with uh, some of the uh, uh, Russell family. I sort of have now the Russell family tree. Um, it really is uh, the uh, folks who live on the corner are the, uh, the grandson of uh, the fellow who, who deeded that property to us. So, they're almost certainly who I need to talk to. And I'm just trying to get the lay of the land um, before we reach out to them and try and understand um, if that's going to work or not. You know, what are they going to say when we approach them and say, well, we think it's appropriate to sell the library and that piece of land um, in support of the project to uh, uh, create a better home for the Russell Memorial Library. Um, they may well say, no, we think, you know, by deed, we should, we should get that property. Um, so we'll see where we go from there, and which would blow a pretty big hole in our budget. Um, so that's where we sit. I mean, I think we're, we're, you know, busy choosing colors for for countertops and, and uh, I know we chose what color the elevator was gonna be on the inside and the outside. Um, hey, Steve. Yes, sir. I had a, had a thought on the existing library building. Sir. We'd already mentioned the thought of still naming the new one Russell Memorial Library. The other thing is if, if they do have a right to reclaim the building, um, we could suggest, um, you know, if you wanted to donate the building and the proceeds of the sale would go towards this library, this new library, which will still be Ross Memorial, that gives them a tax deduction for donating the building. They've probably already taken that. Uh, yeah, yeah but if they, if they have the right to reclaim it, then they own it again. Mary Kate could answer, but I think they actually have to reclaim it and take title to it to do that. Yeah, I, I yeah, I, I'm gonna pass on that uh, more accounting question, but um, it does seem even if they do take it back, that they're taking right. it back, they'll have a zero. Yeah, well, it might yeah. it might hurt them because they'd be taking they'd be showing income. You know, they they receive value. something of value, which they might then owe taxes on and then give it. So, dumb idea, maybe. Well, talk to an accountant. <laughs> yep. um, thank you. Um, I don't really have much under the emergency management uh, unless there's questions. Um, here we go. Infringement on Jockey Lane. Anything? Any? Any uh, movement, John? Uh, I've I've not heard. I offered to the surveyor to uh, meet him when he came up there. I I have not touched base with Bill. I know Bill did send him. Hey, we need you to fill out this W nine form, and I I haven't heard whether Bill's actually got that or not. So I I don't know if payment has exchanged hands or anything on that. I will, uh, I'll check with Bill. Um, but that's, that's basically where it is, is uh, he submitted something for, you know, he submitted his proposal 
and which included a down payment. And I don't know if that down payment's actually been made or not. Uh, I doubt it. I don't think any of us have, uh, well, I certainly have an initial bit and I haven't, okay. I haven't seen the warrant that would come through to do it. Um, all right, uh, salvage yards, as far as I know, there's no movement there. Uh, nothing else. So I included a bunch of stuff under other business uh, because we got a bunch of things that uh, came in kind of late. We don't, I'm not asking for action on these. Um, uh, there was a scout um, who approached us, wanted to do some work um, uh, as part of uh, her gold project or something. Um, yeah, wanted that, to do some work that, on, I'm sorry, Paul? That, yeah, yeah. Nat, Nat, Natalie wanted to replace the fence at the Burrow Hill Cemetery along with perhaps creating a, a sort of a public website or domain to describe the other cemeteries in the town of Moncton. I reached out to her, which I, you all received that copy of my email to her in that I'm, I've done this for, I've actually have done all the Eagle Scout projects coordinated with every Eagle Scout project in the last 20 years. So I figured I'll do this one. So I'm going to reach out with her and figure out what she wants to do and find, uh, talk to the cemetery commission uh, and uh, I'll report there, back there, to you there, folks. There, the there is no, there is no cemetery commission. You're looking um, at it. I thought, oh, <laughs> well, okay. I wasn't sure. I said, <laughs> but needless to say, I need to get her. I, I wanted, I told her, I said, we want to plan and uh, I'm waiting to hear back from her. Okay. Paul, I'll, I'll so send you tomorrow a link to a cemetery finder group in Vermont where every cemetery is registered and the occupants thereof. Thanks, Bill. I, I, <laughs> I'll, pass that along. I'll pass it along to Natalie. Yeah, I'll send it to you tomorrow. Oh, thank, thank you. Um, uh, for what it's worth, um, you know, I repaired the gate, um, one of the gates um, at the Borough Cemetery because it was just falling apart. But it's a big project uh, oh, to repair those fences. Yes, it is. Um, that's why. That's why I'm very curious to hear hear her plan. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a big project and it's and it's expensive. I mean the 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 fences are not the fence pieces are not very are not cheap. I think uh, her brother did the flag project. Uh, over by the post office. Yeah. 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 So this is a. No, oh, a little ahead. bit of what they're getting into. Yeah. This is a, just to be clear. This is a a Girl Scout. It's not a Eagle project. The Girl Scouts still still do exist separately from Scouting BSA, um, and they're supposed to pick a project that allows them to put at least eighty hours of of uh, work into it. That's right. I, I, I assume, John, that it's a, it's on the same guidelines as the Eagle Scout project, is that it is one of the last things that they do to uh, yeah. fulfill kind of their requirements. Well, I mean, it'd be great to get it done. Uh, yes, it's going to need some planning, and it's going to need a ton of fundraising to make it happen. And thank you, Paul, yeah. for uh, being yeah. willing to stand up. Stand up. Uh, let's see. Yep. Um, I also, uh, I, I just sort of mentioned this in passing. Um, used to be that we always got um, as many blue bins as we, as, as our little hearts uh, desired, but um, they're only going to offer blue bins to new residents and residences that do not have a recycling bin. Otherwise, it's going to cost five bucks. If you if you have a recycling bin or you've gotten a recycling bin and you want another one, it's going to cost you five dollars. There you go. Um, this is Addison County Solid Waste Management. There you have it. I'm full of good news. I know. Um, 
Uh, the uh, uh, CIA, the uh, oh, I don't remember what it's called. Uh, Cartography Associates Inc. is the name of the place. This is uh, we had a little discussion yesterday uh, last time at our last meeting. Um, John, um, these are the folks that um, are interested in uh, creating, they create for towns an application. Um, let me back up. These CAI is who's going to do our parcel maps from here on out. They're taking over from Dean Russell. The very good news is that they're moving from AutoCAD, which is what Dean Russell did, which is really not very good, um, uh, to uh, what ArcGIS uses, which is called a geo database. That's the format. Um, and John, to answer your question, there's a ton of um, free services out there, um, online things that will convert a, a geo database file to a KML. Uh, to allow yeah. you to put it up on, I, on I have a couple of them. I guess my, my question was just that the data will be available. They're not exactly. like that's one of the things that Russell yep. initially did to us was that he wouldn't release the data that's, without that's, a whole bunch of arm twisting. Right. right. And he the CAI says no, the data's ours. Okay, not, good. Not like Dean Russell who said it was his. So yeah. I just had that very quick. Um, the way that sits at the moment is I um, applied I, I applied for a grant um, and made that six thousand um, dollars it's basically it's a grant um, legr it's it's basically for local expenses uh, uh, for uh, COVID-19 expenses that the town has yeah. experienced. So yeah. if we get awarded that grant, um, that's how I would pay for that, unless the select board, um, I mean, I certainly wouldn't want to put it, I wouldn't want to pay for it this year. Um, if we still want it, we don't get the grant, then we would, it would be a discussion for our budget um, in December. Sounds good. Yeah. Uh, I guess, uh, is there any other business to come before the board? Uh, I think our next meeting will be September the 28th at yeah. seven o'clock. All right. Okay. Thanks. Yep, I would entertain okay. a motion to adjourn. So moved, Mary Kate. There you go. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We are adjourned. Thank you very much. Thanks. Good night. Good night. Sorry for my kitten.